Hello and welcome back to the Reef Vacuum. Uh, today we're going to show you how to siphon into uh, the Reef Vacuum and filter and uh, return the water back in. So check this out. I'll hover the camera over the top of the Reef Vacuum here. Uh, this here is the front filter sock area where we're going to be putting our siphon hose into once we get a positive siphon going. Uh, we'll pull out about oh, 15 gallons and uh, then we'll, siphon, we'll filter that uh, water and then we'll go ahead and put that water back into the system. So really simple to do. Uh, and keep in mind you don't have to put the same water back into your system. Um, that's, that's a choice you can make if you want to reuse that water or if you want to discard that water. Refactum is great for that. Uh, the tank has got a dolly under it with wheels. You can roll that wherever you want to, discharge it, and then uh, and then add your fresh uh, water mix after you're done doing that. So here we go. So we'll show you how to. Everybody probably knows how to start a siphon. Uh, we'll do it uh, the old school way. So siphon has began. Get a handy little hose clamp here. To clamp your siphon hose into so it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, we'll pull up uh, what we can here. There's not much gravel in this tank, so pretty simple deal, just like you do at home. A little cyano going on here too, like everywhere else. Got lots of flow in here and everything's going right. We still seem to have cyan on us, so try to pick up as much as that as we can. Try not to break any corals while we're at it. Like I said, there's not much and in this system so try to redistribute this the best we can The thing about the reef vacuum is you have such a large container to to siphon into versus siphon into five gallon buckets. I know a lot of people probably use bigger containers, but uh, uh, with the RV20, uh, you can siphon about 18 gallons into that thing at a time uh, if you want to. The RV32, obviously, a lot more than that. It's around 31 gallons, so um, you can siphon all day, uh, basically. And the beauty is, is you can do this over and over again. If you've got a real dirty system, you could, you know, siphon 15 gallons, put it back in there, uh, put and then do another 15 gallons um, until you are absolutely satisfied with the process. So, I'll bet we have we have probably about 10 gallons in there now. So what we'll do is I'll show you how. This whole thing is done here. Go down to the reef vac. We'll turn the machine on. Actually, the valves are in the right position. So what we'll do is we are going to filter right now. So there's not much we have to do. Uh, remove our siphon hose. We'll filter this water for about, I would say, two or three minutes. Uh, the reef vacuums come standard uh, uh, with uh, 200 micron filter socks, a 14 inch filter sock and an 8 inch filter sock. Uh, it also comes with a mesh sock, so if you want to use uh, carbon or whatever, if you have a reason why you, you would need to use uh, uh, products like that in this, it's, it, you can do that. Uh, uh, like I said in the prior videos, uh, the pump on this thing is uh, 6 gallons per minute. 
Um, with all the plumbing and everything, uh, it's just a little bit under six gallons per minute. Uh, both on the vacuum side and on the discharge side and on the filtering side. So uh, we got 10 gallons in there and we'll give it uh, a couple of minutes and it'll be plenty filtered enough through a 200 micron. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put all that water back into the system uh, and we'll have a little cleaner uh, sand bed. <clears throat> when we put the water back in, um, uh, through the discharge hose, we'll put it in in the sump, that way we don't stir up the tank. That's uh, so a good thing about the reef vac is when you do this, you're not stirring up a lot of stuff uh, 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 that you don't want to be stirred up and you don't have to go in there with a turkey baser and blow off rock, sand, and whatever off all your coral when you're done. So, we're worried about a minute and 30 now, we'll give it another 20 seconds or so. Uh, We'll roll this thing over here and we'll discharge it and we'll be good to go. Uh, in the previous video you probably saw uh, where we cleaned the sump out and uh, returned the water back into the sump. Uh, that took us about a total of about three or four minutes uh, including, including chatting and doing whatever but uh, uh, this is about the same thing. It's two or three minutes and maybe once a week doing this and then a couple of minutes on your sump every couple of weeks. Uh, is a good program to do so okay so we're going to shut the pump off real quick flip this switch over to here I'm going to grab the discharge hose wherever it's at it's right here it's hanging on these hangers it's got some nice little hangers on the machine to hang your hoses from so that uh, they stay clean you know so anyhow this is how this goes on-demand pump, so you hear the pump uh, rattle up a little bit right there, it's pressurized, so this will just go ahead and we'll put this water back into the system via the sump here, it's easier to have shade over the sump, and so it acts a little bit of a filter, uh, it, uh, it keeps, like we said in the prior videos, it <clears throat> keeps a lot of those microfine bubbles from getting on the other side, well, they won't really hurt anything, but uh, so we just do it anyway, just, just to keep the stirring stuff up. I know it's a lot of weight and watching, but uh, I've got to show you guys how this thing works. It's a pretty neat deal. Um, it saves you a lot of time. I don't know whether it saves you money or not. Uh, I'm sure it will in the long run, but uh, if time is money, then there you go. Uh, it works really well for that. As a matter of fact, it says the discharge here with this, with this uh, nozzle, um, you can blast rocks and, and uh, <clears throat> whatever. You could actually go inside this if you... If you wanted to, to do some serious crazy cleaning, you could do that as well uh, with this, or just blow stuff around and try to, you know, try to uh, <clears throat> uh, get stuff unhooked, you get get al blow algae off rocks or whatever you got going on. It's got a lot of pressure, and, and that works well for a lot of things. I'm sure you can think of things that you could do with it. Get down here to uh, the bottom of the tank. As soon as uh, the, the tank is empty, it'll uh, RPM will go up. You can hear it makes a different audible sound. Uh, it should take you more than another minute or so. We should be done. Oh, right there. Bam, we're done. Okay, cool. So, got a little bit of water left in there.
keep in mind these creep vacuum pumps can be ran dry and definitely uh, will hurt them any. So if you have other things to do or whatever, you get distracted, the pump is still on, uh, but it's not going to hurt it at all. So uh, it's a very cool thing. So there we go. I'm going to reset uh, <clears throat> my auto top off sensor and we're good to go. So as you can see now what we'll do is bring the camera back over here to the display show you the display for a minute uh, there's there's very very little uh, flower floating around in there there's you know um, it's, it's pretty darn clear uh, for doing a, a clean out uh, we don't have any water on the floor uh, there's not water all over the tank um, which is good too so if you like doing stuff uh, and keeping a clean shop, keeping a clean floor, uh, and a dry floor, uh, the refacuum is great for that too. So, anyhow, there you go. There's our segment on siphoning into the refacuum, filtering, and uh, then returning that same water back into the system. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, uh, stay tuned to reefvacuum.com. We'll have more videos coming. Uh, have a good day. Thank you.